Okay, we're back live at uh, SiliconAngle.tv, the Cube here at Strata Conference. Day two for us, day one for the actual conference. Uh, keynotes are opening up, people are flowing through, all the luminary guests and keynotes are all doing their thing. Crowd is packed and the show is completely sold out, Expo Pass is sold out, and, and we're excited to bring you live coverage all day long, eight hours a day, interviews and commentary from SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com, and Wikibon.org, our research team, and uh, we're going to break it down. Uh, there's a ton of live streams all over the internet with O'Reilly putting out all the keynotes, all the sessions. They have their news desk, which is a cube-like function that they do for O'Reilly, which is you know, book-type interviews, how-tos, and, and some commentary from O'Reilly. But here you're going to get the independent, hard-hitting knowledge, pure knowledge here on the cube, and uh, we're excited to bring that to you. And I just want to say to the folks out there that you can find us on Twitter. The hashtag is Stratacomf. Strata, C-O-N-F, and uh, that's where you can find all the commentary and conversation, and of course, SiliconAngle.tv can bring you the coverage live. Silicon Valley is known for predicting the future, for inventing the future, and, and Strata is really the place here where big data is taking center stage, and really entrepreneurs from all around the world, not just Silicon Valley, are here in force, really taking their hands on big data. We would not be able to bring you this coverage if it wasn't for advertisers, and we are now 100% advertising support with theCUBE. We want to thank our, our supporters who have put up advertising. You'll see videos throughout the day. Uh, this is a first for theCUBE, and we're excited by that, and we want to thank Cloudera. We want to thank uh, uh, Digital Reasoning, MapR, and uh, did I forget one? 1010 Data. 1010 Data, there it is. So those are the guys. You're going to see videos throughout the day and uh, thank them. They're big supporters. They allow us to do our thing all day long and I'm excited. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and uh, as John said, this is day two for us. Day one really of the kickoff of the Strata Conference and we've got a great guest here today. Uh, we're talking about one of the hottest spaces in the storage business. Storage is, of course, the linchpin of, of big data. Scott Dietzen is the CEO of Pure Storage. Scott, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So you are in the flash space. It doesn't get any, any, any hotter <laughs> than that. Uh, everybody's jumping in, even the big whales. Um, and uh, so let's get into it. Um, so we're here at Strata. Uh, we want to talk about the big data angle, but maybe we can start off by just talking about you know, flash almost overnight. Um, it's just taken the storage world by storm. Uh, maybe for those who aren't, you know, so familiar with it, why? What? What's the big driver for flash? Why is it all of a sudden so hot? Well, it, as you're considering a. a data workload that it's a good fit for Flash. The, the first thing to look at is how much random I.O. Are, are you doing inside of this workload? Um, because Flash is two to three times faster than, a, than disk at sequential workloads, but it's, it's two orders of magnitude, think 100x faster on random I.O. So if, if you work, look at workloads like online transaction processing in a data store, if you virtualize uh, your databases, uh, if you're doing complex analytics uh, in the Hadoop family, if you're relying on HBase or planning to rely on HBase, all those workloads tend to be random I.O. intensive, uh, and you, you, your CPU is just horribly mismatched with your hard drive for, for random I.O. From the CPU's perspective, hard drives today look slower than tape did 15 years ago on those, on those random I.O.s. So in, your CPUs are a lot more efficient if they're not sitting there waiting and context swapping until this you know, disk comes back eons later from the CPU's perspective. So that's where I would start, you know, is, is random I.O. intensive workloads. Uh, the other thing to look at is uh, deduplication in particular. Uh, there are new techniques out, uh, Pure has been uh, pioneering this, that allow us to reduce a, a, a data set in real time. So you know, we can get four to five X uh, data reduction on typical structured database workloads, even more for virtualization workloads. And four X is, is significant because at four X we can deliver MLC uh, at or below uh, the price point of hard drives. Uh, so when you can get flash down below the price point of hard drives, it's, it's dramatically more space and power efficient, uh, as well as being you know, two to three X faster sequentially and 100 X faster for random work. So MLC is the, the less expensive flash, right? Uh, I don't want to say cheaper, because, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, but, but it's, it's also less reliable, but you got more capacity to deal with things like wear leveling, is that right? Is that the concept there? Uh, it is, uh, so multi-cell level flash, um, is uh, it, it, it tends to have uh, more variable performance, right? Especially if you're mixing reads and writes uh, on the same drive. Uh, and it also uh, tends to support fewer write cycles. Uh, so flash wears out over time. Uh, you get so many writes. Um, but these problems are absolutely solvable in software. 
uh, much like uh, we did with disks, right? Uh, what storage arrays traditionally did was meld a bunch of semi-reliable hard drives into a much more reliable, more performing whole. Uh, we think that same work um, is being done now around uh, Flash. I'm right? old enough to remember those, re those hard drives weren't that reliable. <laughs> well, and, and, and Flash is solid state, right? Without mechanical uh, moving parts, uh, there's a lot less uh, to, to wear out, and, and, and it's actually very predictable. When you, you know, we, we have managed to work around uh, every flash issue we've seen, you know, in our two and a half years of existence, uh, you know, we've had uh, several dozens of customers that have been running workloads for, for two years. Uh, we have literally never had a flash device fail in a way that we couldn't automatically recover it. So you got like the, the CPU running at the Hussein bolt speed and then you got the disk drive going really slowly like it's got cement on the shoes, okay? And <laughs> so, so it's the only mechanical piece that's left in the computer architecture and essentially you're talking about doing away with that for all high performance activity or most high performance activity. I, I, I think that is the key. Um, what you want to do is get mechanical storage out of the performance path. No one is saying disk doesn't belong in the data center. Disk absolutely is in the data center for capacity workloads um, and you know archiving, backup. And, and I think it's going to continue to do heavy lifting like video streaming and uh, compressed file system workloads like we see in um, MapReduce uh, you know workloads because the, the, the flash cost is n is not that dramatically different there. But you know. Again, from the CPU's perspective, um, you know, going to Flash is like going down the street to a library. Waiting for disk is like getting in a canoe and, and trying to paddle across the ocean. So, John, you remember Data Domain? You know, talking about Silicon Valley startups, Data Domain hot startup. They had the uh, they had the bumper sticker saying "Tape sucks," and but I'm hearing is "Disk sucks." So, um, we need to really address that problem. Well, uh, and, and and in fairness, right? I mean. Data Domain absolutely used the, the tape sucks, but what Data Domain helped do was redefine the role of tape. Tape got pushed further back into off-site storage and long-term archiving, um, and, and disk was used for the critical path. And, and the thing we loved about the Data Domain model is they used data reduction to make the media people wanted hard drives uh, affordable, right? Delivered at or below the price point of tape. And that's what we're striving to do with pure storage uh, for Flash, is to make the media people want Flash, which is so much denser, faster, and more power efficient, uh, but it suffers from being too expensive. We can use data reduction to get the price point below hard drives. And then why wouldn't you use Flash for all these workloads? Scott, Scott, you've been you've been a very successful entrepreneur, rock star, some say in the valley, <laughs> and I hate that word, but you know, you've been very successful, but you've been in the business talking to customers. Um, you've been involved in mega trends before, so obviously Flash is a mega trend, there's no real debate about that. The question I have for you is, as you're out in the landscape doing this work, what are you seeing in terms of where the market is? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being fully mature, or one being just getting started. Uh, are people truly embracing Flash? We know that they're using it. Fusion IO went public, there's a lot of big clients, but the average IT shop and big IT shop, I mean, how, how far has it gone and will it go and where is it in terms of uh, adoption, fully from a system standpoint? So in the data center, Flash is still at its its very early stages. Um, you know, w with the Fusion IO IPO last year, we got some visibility into some large consumer website deployments. Uh, uh, Google's rumored to be using it for their instant search, uh, for example. And you know, obviously, we know Facebook and Apple are deploying it at at scale. Um, but you know, we we think the, the the critical model is to is to get again the Flash price point down, and we think. All the 15K drives in the world uh, are ultimately going to get replaced with Flash. And, and that's a total of about 10 exabytes a year. The consumer Flash market is already 20 exabytes a year. And, and by the way, that's where the demand seems to start, right? People love their phones. Uh, they love their tablets. Uh, the performance, the power savings is very visible to them. And the reliability is there for those workloads. Why not get this stuff into the data center if it can be made cost effective? From an evolution standpoint, Dave likes to talk about S-curves and all that good stuff, but really, you know, it's getting out there, so it's still in the early days. From an architectural standpoint, where people actually reusing Flash from an architectural standpoint, where is the status of that kind of engineering? And, and like you said, you have background in the systems and systems chops, as we were talking before. How much work needs to get done from an engineering standpoint to come in and make Flash and commodity hardware, quite frankly, really rock and roll, I can, have five, I can have four cores, I can have master slave, I can redefine the, the architecture for IO, database work, unstructured, structured. So how much more work is there to do? What's your view on that? Um, I, I, again, I think we're at the very early stages, right? So we're delivering Flash now in, in form factors, um, you know, with 
uh, Fusion IO's cards, for example, and their, their competitors there. You can uh, ins insert a Fusion IO card into your server, and for software that's been designed to use the server as the store of record, you know, it, it's an easy fit. Uh, the problem for a lot of system software that's out there, uh, database virtualization solutions, is they're really designed to leverage shared storage uh, for high availability, um, performance management, consistent snapshots, and so on. These are things that you know really are, are very hard to accomplish in the server tier unless you spend uh, a lot of time in distributed systems expertise to get there. So you know we think there's going to be a, a huge push for Flash in true tra traditional servers, and there are two form factors. Uh, the one that Pure is doing is all Flash um, and using data reduction to get the cost down. Uh, the alternative form, form factor is where you mix Flash and traditional hard drives into a, a single device. Uh, you know, we, we jokingly call that hierarchical storage management because that's what it is, right? Um, the challenge with mixing Flash and disk is you never know what you're going to get. You issue an I.O. request, sometimes you're fortunate enough to hit the Flash cache. Um, and other times you've got to wait on disk and you see a one or two magnitude, order of magnitude latency spike, that's, that's no fun up the stack. But you know, there's one other point I want to make. I'm really excited about Flash getting broadly into the server. Um, one would expect that Intel over time is going to put Flash on the motherboard and we're going to have very fast interconnects between the CPU complex and Flash. As that happens, I think much of the system software in the world is going to evolve to take advantage of that local flash cache. I still think the store of records going to mostly be in uh, shared storage because for flash the economics run in reverse. Flash is actually cheaper as a network appliance than it is as a server insert. That, I think what you just said was so exciting because people who might not understand that, unpacking that, is that as Intel moves to this new architecture, whole new of innovation will innovation will create around that. I mean, being an operating system uh, geek myself and a data geek now, I mean, it's just limitless. I mean, so what possibilities? I mean, take your take your CEO hat off of your storage for a minute and talk about the entrepreneur. Looking forward, what does that enable? I mean, we're talking about a completely new redefinition redef of what an operating system is, how to construct systems with data here at Big Data. What, what kind of opportunities are you seeing that as an entrepreneur you go, man, there is, when we get to the top of this mountain, we're going to look out on the vista and see valleys of, of great opportunity. What are you going to see? Uh, it's a fabulous question. Um, the, the thing that makes the, the valley so exciting, especially right now, is you know, the we, we've talked a little bit about big data, we've talked about uh, flash. Those are two of the dislocators that are, that are sweeping through, but there are a bunch of others, right? And we have cloud and virtualization, you know, making everything elastic. Uh, one of the things that's extremely exciting to me is once you have an elastic data store, uh, there's no reason not to mix online and analytic workloads together because if you need to scale them, you just add uh, CPU, right? Um, and, and storage and, and the whole system just, just goes. So uh, you're not in this situation where, you know, Current customers like would love to do certain analytic things, but they can't afford to uh, because their batch cycles just don't give them enough time uh, to run these things. If it's just incremental scale, you just decide what your budget is and what you can accomplish it in that budget, and you can uh, change the budget. I, I think the other profound change is mobility, and uh, you know, tablets sort of have become the client of record, uh, replacing PCs for you know all but the most information intensive users. Uh, so. You look at that, it's a clean suite, right? The client changes, uh, the server environment changes because of cloud, storage changes because of flash, uh, and, and big data. Um, so it, it's going to be very tough to be an incumbent in the coming years. What do you think about networking? Because there's, a, there's all this talk about converged networking, and you know, obviously storage is in that equation, as well, as well as a compute and server. But the network now is the bottleneck, and so there's really kind of new bottlenecks kind of shifting with this innovation. It's like jacking up one side of the car, and then the other side needs to be jacked up. So changing all the tires, one of them networking. Um, there's talk about virtualized networks. What's your view on that? I mean, it's still kind of an open book, and I know a lot of investors are looking at things like OpenFlow and other tech Techniques because if you have unlimited compute and access to multiple data sets at the same time and kind of the things that you're doing, the network's the bottleneck. So what it, what's, what's your view of that? So I, I think I'll take issue with uh, network being the bottleneck. Uh, by far the slowest thing in the data center is mechanical disk, right? And, and it's consuming 40% of the data center's power. If you look at a typical latency curve, it's, it's 90 plus percent of the latency is waiting on that, you know, that disk head uh, to spin. Um, I, I would say on the network side, uh, we are seeing profound uh, advances, right? I you know, uh, was talking to the, the, the Mellanox uh, CEO recently, and you know, he, he talked about his customers jumping from one gig E straight to 40 gig E. 
um, that's a that's a huge uh, shift up the curve. And with uh, Romley uh, CPUs coming out from Intel and 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 much. Uh, more scalable bus technology, interconnecting that. Uh, I, I think we're going to be able to take advantage of this new networking technology. Uh, and you know, the good news for us is all this pressure from CPU and network advancements put that much more pressure on the storage, uh, which is going to be flash. Okay, I would I would kind of agree with you there, but I don't want to kind of argue that point. But assuming that flash replaces all the mechanical parts. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that in a few years, but you've got a long way to go. You got a lot of headroom. You said it's early on in Flash. Um, obviously, you have a big vision with pure storage, and that's a, a good market share if you can replace all the moving disk. Your go-to-market as a business, you got to kind of tackle some kind of blocking and tackling stuff. What are you guys doing for your as you go into your customer customer base? What's the biggest problems that you can tackle right now? Is it the dedupe? Is it that environment? What specifically is it? Compression. So, you got to start somewhere. So, what's your entry beachhead that you guys are nailing down right now? One of the most crucial things for a startup is, is, is honing a repeatable cell. And by repeatable cell, I mean that you can quickly identify a customer pain point and, and recognize if you've got a solution that will fix that customer. So you can then arm your channel partners and your sales force with the information they need to identify great candidates uh, for, your, for your product and, and ones that are going to be a fit, right? Because it's really expensive to engage with a customer that your technology doesn't prove a fit for. I mean, startups make more mistakes by saying, yes to customers than by saying no, right? If you can walk away because something isn't a perfect fit, you're better off and, and finding you know, those other customers that are that ideal fit. So, so for us, we really worked hard you know, by prospecting over two years of our early access customer program to hone the repeatable cells. And, and for us, it's structured uh, data workloads, so you know, traditional SQL databases um, because we get great data reduction on them, order four to five X data reduction. That allows us to deliver flash below the price point of hard drives. Uh, the other workload is uh, server virtualization. Um, server virtualization has even uh, more redundancy compressibility in the data set, which allows us to get, you know, in some cases, eight to 10 X data reduction. So we can go in at half the price uh, of what customers are spending on their traditional hard drive storage today, and that's without any flash caches, that's without counting short stroking on the disk, uh, and it's not without counting any of the power and space savings that comes out of flash. I love those kinds of value propositions, right? When a competitor would have to do more than discount their product to free, they'd have to write the customer a check for it to be in the customer's interest not to take your product. Yeah, so I wonder if we could talk about the market because it's, um, it's it, I've been saying it's hot. Um, let's t talk about that a little bit. Valuations are, you know, going through the roof. Are they are mostly private companies? Uh, you know, obviously, Stack is public, and there's a couple others. But um, and you saw some some acquisitions earlier. Um, is the market starting to figure out the difference between sort of, you know, the analog being a disk drive supplier and say a storage systems company? Um, and and in other words, you've got uh, guys like Stack that were going through the roof. You look at the chart, and it looks like you know 1999 all over again, but it was just a couple years ago with all the sort of EMC action, and now that's sort of settled down a little bit. At the same time, you got startups coming out like Solid Fire, don't even have a product out yet, and you know, a lot of, lot of buzz, a lot of, lot of talk. You guys, you know, smoking hot. So are the valuations uh, fair? Of course, your CEO, you're going to say, yeah, they're a little <laughs> undervalued, but let's talk about the, the, the market size. So talk a little bit about you know, the, the size of the market that you guys are going after, because uh, as we all know, the size of the market really makes the, the, the valuations attractive, right? Uh, indeed. So, so you know, the, the really fun bit as an entrepreneur is, is, is finding a big market that's about to experience a dislocator and getting a great, great team together. Uh, the scale of this market is very large. Just the performance storage market. This is, you know, where um, some application is waiting on the result, and, and so it's, you know, it's crucial to do it in, 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 in as quickly as you can. That market is 15 to 20 billion dollars of, of annual spent. Um, you know, and it, and it, it currently is predominantly going to buy hard drives today. Um, we don't think those customers are getting enough for their money, and you know, that's what you know, creates this opportunity to, to come in and sell uh, Flash. I, I would say this market has changed pretty dramatically, too. Gartner has uh, the all-Flash market as growing to order $3 billion um, in, uh, 20, by 2015. Uh, uh, literally a year ago, uh, when you talk to analysts, they didn't believe there was going to be an all-Flash market. They thought the mark, you know, it was going to be Flash caches added in front of disk tiers, uh, but I think it's literally been the demonstration of being able to do this data reduction uh, and, and, and use MLC to get the price point of uh, flash down below disk that's changed the way people are thinking about the market. So, it, oh, go ahead, sorry. 
I was just going to say, certainly, you know, those in the space doing M&A understand the difference between the technology providers. I mean, uh, we work with Stack, for example. They're one of our technology suppliers. And, and those like us that are systems companies, right? We predominantly take commodity um, uh, hardware components, off-the-shelf hardware components. We're not trying to innovate in hardware. We're relying on Stack. We're relying on Samsung or other suppliers uh, for, for that technology. And we focus most of our energy in, in software, which is, is frankly what the storage business yeah. at the systems level is, is a software business. And, and Fusion IO would say the same, right? I mean, they're, they see themselves as a software innovator. Um, I'm sure, you know, SolidFire would say the same. So I want to test those numbers a little bit because uh, Wikibon published, um, and Mark, if you could bring that up, the, uh, the Flash Memory Summit Roundup. Um, I'm looking at uh, table one, actually. So what David Floyer did, David did this, and we were talking about this a little earlier, basically broke down the market in terms of flash storage on servers, which would be the Fusion I.O. You know, piece, flash only arrays, which would be you guys and some others, and then traditional storage arrays, mainly SATA. Uh, and he broke down the storage capacity uh, that's going to, you know, by 2015, how much of the capacity is going to go on each of those, the relative pricing and the percent of enterprise spend. And you can see he's got, you know, a small piece, 3% going to flash storage on server, but it's expensive. It's, you know, 12x SATA drive, so it's going to be 20% of the spend. For you guys, he's got that, the fat middle. That's the big part of the marketplace. 11% <laughs> of the capacity, and, and it's because it's 6x the price of, you know, spinning SATA, it's 35% of the market. Now, that equates, if you assume a $35 billion market, that's about 10, 12 billion. Okay, so significantly larger than, than what, what Gartner forecasts. So I think the Floyer scenario is that prices are coming down faster, and then to your point, why wait? You know, wait. If you can get flash in your PC, like I have, you don't have a disk drive in there. Uh, and then disk drive, as you were saying, data domain uh, changed the whole use case for tape. You're trying to change the use case for disk, kind of pushing SATA to the bit bucket. So, exactly right. So it's a matter of timing. It's not, a, it's a, not an if, it's a when. Gartner has three billion by 2015. I don't know, David's numbers are significantly larger than that. Um, so, you know, we'll see. We'll come back in a couple years and, and talk about it. You know, I, I can tell you as an entrepreneur, um, it, it's like the Grand Canyon. I've, I've been there a, about a dozen times, and every time I go, it's bigger than I remember it, right? So you know, th this market opportunity from you know an entrepreneur's perspective, uh, it it's it's it, it feels unbounded in terms of the, the demand we're seeing out in in the marketplace. So it's going to be uh, a really exciting uh, time. We're going to see a bunch of fiercely contested. Uh, uh, you know, I innovations and startups going up against uh, the big guys, um, and it's you know it's what Silicon Valley is all about. So, how do you differentiate from all the other sort of flash-only guys out there? What's your what's your bumper sticker there? Well, it, so, so let me talk about differentiation along two dimensions. Most of the time, we end up competing with traditional disk uh, in our customer engagements, right? So, so there we are. You know, we're we're taking all flash and we're putting it up against uh, a you know, a disk legacy solution that's got a flash cache in it. Um, we argue that the big problem with that is the variable uh, response time um, because you know, every time you fall through cache, you've got to wait on disk. And if it, especially as you start putting 7,200 RPM SATA drives back there, you may be waiting a very long time uh, to get your data back when it doesn't fit in that flash cache. But by taking price off the table, right, if we can deliver that all flash uh, at or below the price point of just the hard drives without the flash cache, then it, then it truly becomes a no-brainer. So if you flip the equation over and then you look at, uh, you know, the other companies innovating around the flash area, uh, for, for us, the, the differentiators are we've pushed the cost curve more than anyone else, I believe, on two fronts. One, um, we, we try to stay at the, the leading edge of the, you know, the lowest cost MLC that we can get. Um, that means it's the least reliable uh, in terms of how many times you can write it, uh, but we've been able to use our software techniques uh, to deliver you know, on par reliability for that more economic uh, flash in, in, in the box. And then the other thing is we've demonstrated data reduction that you know, delivers results in 500 microseconds to, to a millisecond. Um, I don't believe there's any technology out there uh, where those results are demonstrable, right? Our competition generally turns off what data reduction technologies they advertise when they're benchmarking the product. We don't. When we put up numbers, you know, 200,000 IOPS, that's in conjunction with deduplication and compression uh, going on. Very so, efficient. No latency there. Yeah, and, and there's an existence proof now that you can do this really fast because this has been the holy grail of primary storage uh, for, you know, order 
10 years, um, and, and now we can show that with Flash we can do it. Great. Scott, great to have you on. You can come on theCUBE anytime. Um, you'll see us around. We're going to be also at uh, Hadoop Summit. We'll also be at the HBase Conf that uh, Cloudera is putting on, HBase Conference, um, as well as uh, EMC World, VMworld, all the normal uh, other tech shows. So, pure knowledge from the CEO of Pure Storage. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Final parting question is, um, take a personal look at uh, what's going on right now and share with the folks out there watching. In your mind's eye, what, share with them what what's happening right now in this uh, tech, tech business. Um, and, and then talk about what will be different next year at Strata when we come back. Um, as an entrepreneur, as an investor, as a CEO, as a person, what's happening right now in the tech scene and what's going to be different next year? Well, uh, let me use that to, to focus a, a little bit um, specifically on big data. I, I'm a board member at uh, Cloudera. I'm, I'm blessed to have that opportunity. Uh, it's a, another big market and another incredibly gifted uh, technical team, which uh, makes it hugely fun for me. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about the emergence of HBase. I think we are going to look back and, and see you know, a lot more big data go online and you know, support uh, incremental um, update and evolution. Uh, HBase as a technology allows you to do um, a lot more things with, with big data. So for example, you can do a big hosted SaaS deployment because the changes are incremental. It's not like you're trying to uh, do these huge batch cycles and you know, bring yet a new copy of the online data uh, the online data in for analytic processing, um, and it lets you mix more of the online workload in against the same big data infrastructure. I would say that you know the other trend I'm really excited about is big data ISVs. Um, you know, companies, especially um, partial to Hadoop, uh, given the Cloudera connection, but we're, we're seeing a bunch of software vendors and SaaS vendors offering um, value-added uh, solutions on top and, and making big data analytics uh, that more accessible to a broader population of users that don't want to, you know, have their own MapReduce uh, programmers on staff uh, to write these things. So I think we'll look back at this year, at the next strata, and, and, uh, and see that success. And uh, John, Dave, I would just like to thank you very much. Always love to come on yeah. theCUBE. You're great, and you're more than welcome to guest write on SiliconANGLE if you want yeah. to, anytime. <laughs> and of course, if you're at an event where we're here, um, you're always well, welcome to come on theCUBE. R love the knowledge and experience, and thanks for sharing that with everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, Scott, thank you. Appreciate you coming on.